We're going to start by making the interior box. The pieces for that are listed in the section called interior box on the cutting guide. We have front and back pieces which are large two uh, side pieces, these are the taller ones, and one bottom piece. Now all of this chipboard I have already uh, glued it up double. Uh, the cutting guide calls for for making, uh, for instance, four pieces that are this size so you have uh, a double thickness for every, every uh, section that we have here. And then to make the box uh, we start with one of the large pieces on the bottom and then our glue up is going to be to put the sides on top. Everything goes on top of one of the, the large pieces uh, and the bottom fits in between the two sides like so. This side fits over here along this and then the other piece rests on top. So I'll go ahead and put these pieces together. Then once you get the three sides uh, attached, go ahead and run a bead of glue around the top and then set the other large side in place. And then let that thoroughly dry. Next we'll work on the second level and in the cutting guide under the medium weight chipboard there's a section named second level and there are two large pieces that are the top and the base and then a series of nine pieces that will form the sides of the second level. Now uh, the second level gets notched around the interior box that we just made and also there are some corner notches for the towers. So in the cutting guide there's also a layout uh, that shows the measurements that I'm going to talk you through now. So you can refer to this um, as well as watching the video. We're going to start by drawing a line that is 1 and 5 sixteenths in. That's a sixteenth of an inch more than a quarter of an inch. And then we're going to measure over from there to the right two and one quarter inches. Two and one quarter inches. And connect those. And then this slot needs to be six and three quarters inches long, so I'm going to measure down six and three quarters inches. And connect those lines. Then I'm going to turn it so that the slot faces this direction. I'm going to make a center line just down at this end in the middle of this two and a quarter inch section. So that's at one and one eighth. Because we want to have a little indentation or a notch I guess you could say for the tall tower. And that tall tower is two and five eighths inches wide. So I'm just putting my centering ruler here on that center line that I just drew and to measure for two and five eighths we want to measure from that center line out one and five sixteenths so I'll just measure one and five sixteenths out from the center line on either side on the cutting guide that shows that there's a three sixteenths inch on either side here. That would be the same difference. And then I also want to draw a line in that's a quarter of an inch. So the tall tower is going to fit here where it just kind of comes in a little bit 
to make sure everything will fit into the uh, onto a 12 inch piece of chipboard so that I'm just going to erase these little lines here so that our uh, interior box it's basically the interior box fits up to to this point and then the tall tower will come in here then we have two more notches to draw for our back corner towers. So I've got this oriented now so that my notch opening is to the top up here. I'm going to, from the left side, draw in three quarters of an inch. Three quarters of an inch from the left side. And then each of these notches is 5 eighths of an inch wide. So I'll measure in 5 eighths. Flip this around and measure in 5 eighths here. So these two notches come in 3 quarters of an inch from the left side and then down or up 5 eighths inch uh, this way, so they're not, uh, they're rectangles. So we're going to cut out these two corners and this long slot with its two little ears right here. And then we'll repeat these measurements on our second side, our second piece, so it'll be exactly the same. So I'll get those two pieces cut and then I'll be back. So here are my two second levels with all of their notches cut out and I'm just going to test their fit by bringing in my interior box and this notch should come right to the end of the box and then this is my tall column. It should be able to fit inside of the other notches there. And you don't want it to be super tight because you'll have paper around the um, column here. So if it's, if it's really snug, and mine's a little snug, I'm going to take just a little hair off of each, each of the insides here just to increase this width between these two notches just a tiny bit to allow for the paper around that tall tower. So I'll do that and then we'll be back to put it together. The second level has sides but they all go around the outside. So to support them from the inside we're going to use some of our ledger strips. So on the bottom what we want to do is measure up a sixteenth of an inch or you could just use one of your uh, side pieces here and put ledger strips on three sides. So I'll go ahead and do that. So I have my ledger strips on three sides at the bottom and I also need to put a second set on. Now the second set, the second set needs to be uh, positioned so that the top level is six inches from the top because remember our uh, large tower here is six inches uh, tall. And so you can either uh, measure down six inches and then hold the ledger strip back a sixteenth of an inch from that to allow for the width of the second level or you can just measure down six and a six and one sixteenth inches and put the ledger strip right on that line. And that's what I'm going to do because I have a, a ruler that is easily, I can easily see the sixteenths of an inch. So we'll put those around the same three sides. And uh, just so that the top, when we put our second level in, it the top of that will be at the six inch, uh, six inch mark. So we'll start by gluing the base piece to our interior box. We'll run a, a row of glue right along 
our ledger strips. And then make sure you're putting the ledger strips towards um, the side, the short side of the ledger strips towards this side here. And you can either fit it down inside of here or it may be easier to work on it from this direction. Make sure you get it pushed all the way so that this edge with the notches is even there. That should all be nice and flush. And then we can just set that aside to dry. Now while that base is drying, I'm going to put decorative paper on the top piece and I have it oriented here so the wider side is towards me and the cutout is over here to the right. This is the front towards me. And so I'm going to be using some decorative paper that has a direction to it. So I'm just keep in mind that this is my front and so if there's uh, if there's a top and a bottom, I want it oriented this way. So I've also, I think you can see here, I've added some inch and a half tape to these two sides. Uh, if you don't have inch and a half, just put several layers here because we'll be um, attaching the round column here. And we haven't built the annex yet, but the annex will come out here in the front. So we want to have some good um, uh, adhesion there. And on the rest of these edges, I'm just going to run some quarter inch tape. So I'm going to go ahead and do that and uh, then I'll be back. So I have my top all covered with score tape and uh, this is the paper that I've chosen to cover the second level with. So I'll remove my backing and I'm just going to adhere it directly to the edges. There's no wrapping involved here. So once I get it adhered I will go ahead and trim it even with all my little notches, etc. So I'll go ahead and get that accomplished and then I'll be back. So here's the top of my second level covered with paper. I've also used some Distress Ink. I'm using ground espresso with this paper and I've inked all the edges. Not all the edges will show but it's just easier I think to ink them all. So I'm just going to set that piece aside. Now I'm going to cover the sides of the tower and I'm going to use uh, this uh, paper with the figures on it. It's got green checks on the back side and um, I've cut a piece that is eight inches by six and a half and it's going to wrap around the column but on the back side, this side here, I want to leave an inch overhang and make sure I don't crease it. So I'm going to just uh, it's directional paper, so I want to draw my line on this, on the inside of this side. So I've drawn a one inch line. I can see it. I've done it with a chalk pencil. I thought that might show up a little bit better. And then, so it's going to come around this way and then this front edge will wrap around to the inside of this notch. So I'm going to put some tape 
uh, on here and then I'll be back to cover it. I prepped my paper with score tape, top, bottom. This is the one inch um, flap on this side so I've got uh, two rows of score tape coming up to the one inch part. And then on the tower itself I've got a strip on each of the, the edges here and then along the top. So to put this on, I want to make sure that that cut edge is coming right to the bottom of this tower. So I'm going to uh, wrap it in the vertical position. And I'm going to start back here with my one inch mark. So I'll remove this um, tape backing here. And just from the bottom over here, this top um, hangs over. And I'm lining up my one inch line. And then I'm just going to remove score tape and continue around wrapping it. Now when I get to this front side, I'll just use my thumb and finger to go ahead and get that to go around that corner there. And then looking up here at the top, I want to trim this back a little bit here so that I want to reduce bulk when we wrap this top piece. So I've just cut a little notch out of the top there and so now I'll just go ahead and remove this score tape backing. And fasten this edge to the inside there and go ahead and give that a burnish. And then to wrap the top, first we're going to make a cut. I made a cut to separate the top here right at the edge of the column because we're only going to wrap this this part around here to begin with. And what I'll do is um, cut some little wedges out of here. Some little I removed the score tape. You can cut these wedges with or without the score tape on there. Just use your scissors and come in and cut little triangular pieces right up to the top there. And continue that around and then we'll be able to wrap that edge. And I'm going to do that, oh, probably about every, oh, three sixteenths of an inch or so, I would say. So just cutting a little series of wedges like that. So I'll get my wedges cut and then I'll be back. So I have all of my little wedges cut around the top there and before I um, set them down I'm just going to run a, a bead of glue oh, in about a quarter of an inch or so. My experience with these little pieces are Sometimes they need glue as well as the score tape. And then I'm just going to bend them in one by one, kind of pre-score them just so I get a kind of a smoother edge there. And go ahead and get all those little pieces stuck down. Then I'll smooth that edge with my bone folder and then come back with some of my Distress Ink right along that top edge. I'll get this front notched edge, the whole bottom, and the edge of this flap that's hanging out here. And then we can just set this piece aside for a few minutes.
So on the back side of the interior box, I'm going to use this paper from the 6 inch pad. Now I really want to have a piece that's six and a half inches tall, but since this paper is only six inches tall, I'm going to extend it by a half an inch. And I'll do that by cutting a three quarters inch strip off of a second piece of paper and overlapping it so that I end up with a piece that's six and a half inches tall by six inches wide. Now, if you choose to use a different paper, just cut a piece that's six inches wide by six and a half inches tall. So I'll get that piece made and then I'll be back. So here's my paper. It's now six and a half inches tall. And I'm going to take my scoreboard and score it right at six inches. And then at six and one eighth. And that will make a little eighth inch channel that will help us wrap it around the top. And then on the left side, I'm going to score it at three eighths of an inch. So on the top it was six and then six and one eighth. And then on the left side it was three eighths of an inch. So I've run some score tape along each of those um, areas that we just scored. I cut a little notch out here at the top. What I did was I cut all the way into the um, second score that's at six inches and then I just cut a little wedge there. So the remainder of this we want to have some pretty good uh, score tape coverage because when this is on our box the two turrets get attached back here and we want to make sure that the paper that they're being attached to is firmly attached to the box. So I'll put some really good score tape coverage here on the back or you could use, um, uh, if you've got a really good glue stick, uh, you could use that if only if you trust it. I don't have a lot of good luck with glue sticks but it might be my climate. Um, so anyway, something so that you'll get really good adhesion uh, between this paper and the box. So I've got my abundant score tape on here. And when we go to put this on our box, make sure you are working on, this is the narrow side here. You can see this side is wider back here. Also, this is, here's the notch. So I know that I have the back of the building facing me and we'll wrap that left corner this eighth inch channel that we have goes right around the top here and then this will wrap down here on the bottom also before you uh, do the wrap um, it's a good idea to go ahead and ink this bottom edge down here because you won't be able to get at it once it's on there. So I'll go ahead and install this piece and then I'll be back. On the front of the building I'm again going to use some paper from the six inch pad. I need two strips that are one and one quarter inches but in order to be able to extend them to reach my six and a half inch length I'll actually cut three strips that are inch and a quarter and then I'll be back. So here are my two strips that are an inch and a quarter wide and they're now six and a half inches long because I extended them just like I did the back piece and I want to kind of just tone down the contrast between the um, light squares and the dark squares here so I'm just taking some of my distress ink and just kind of lightly. It doesn't, I'm, I don't need, want to tone it down tons, but just so it kind of fades in the background a little bit more. Obviously this is optional. And then I want to score these at the top like we did before at the six inch and then the six and one eighth to make a little one eighth inch channel right there at the top. And then I'll add some score tape on the inside of that channel and run it around the edges and then I'll be back. 
And I forgot to say that on just one of these, we also want to make a vertical score line that is at 7 eighths, so that we end up with a 3 eighths inch uh, on one side and 7 eighths on the other side. So the one with the 3 eighths inch score is going to go on this right edge over here and bend around just like we did for the back one. So I'll go ahead and get that installed. So here's that one installed. And then for the one on the other side, we're going to measure in three quarters of an inch from the edge. And I'll just draw a line there. So three quarters of an inch in from the edge. And then we'll just install this one so that it meets up to that edge. And then from your little leftover scrap of the checkered paper, you can go ahead and fill in just right across the top here. Score it at uh, 3 eighths and then a half an inch and wrap that to the inside and then come around to the front just to clean finish this front edge right here. So I'll cut this to length and do that. So now we can go ahead and glue on our top piece. We'll just run a bead of glue right on the top of the ledger strip all around and put that in place. Now we're, while we're waiting for that top level to dry, we can go ahead and put together our sides all in a row. Now they're numbered and we put them in order, 1 through 9. The only uh, caveat is that between pieces 2 and 3, the join is on the outside. So I like to just go ahead and do those two pieces first. So between 2 and 3, and between 5 and 6, those joins are on the outside. And then all of the other joins will be on the inside. And I like to just take my time, put the two pieces together, uh, you know, so I can see their numbers, then flip it over and add the strip. Because otherwise it's easy to get confused and add the, the piece to the wrong end. So I'm just going to put all the other uh, pieces in a row here with the joins on the inside. And there is no need to have a joining strip on the uh, beginning of piece one or on the end of piece nine. So I'll go ahead and get all of those sides put together. So here are all my sides attached together and you can see uh, they now form the same shape as the second level. And hopefully you saw the two notes in the videos about adding ledger strips on the longer sides of um, on the inside of both of the uh, large pieces to our second level. I of course forgot to do that so I'm going to take a moment now to add mine. And if you didn't see those notes what I'm doing is just adding ledger strips on the inside holding them back the sixteenth of an inch on the four long sides and then also underneath here as well. So I'll just take a moment to do that. So now we we'll want to do a dry fit and just start with your uh, I'm going to start in the back with piece number four putting that in. Just test fitting to make sure all my corners are lining up and working my way around. And everything looks really good. So we can glue this on and I'm going to start by uh, 
got the back facing me so this is my notched end over here to my left and you have to glue the top and the bottom at the same time so what we'll do is just kind of work in sections and go around I'm going to start with piece four which is the back and run a bead of glue along the ledger strips on both the top and the bottom here and then fit piece four inside there now piece four is is an eighth of an inch shorter than that back piece to allow for the thickness of the chipboard as it bends the corners if you go ahead and bend the two corners in those two corners should fit and you should get uh, a nice uh, line up here just put some once you get it lined up left to right just put some pressure on it top to bottom squeeze those uh, to the top and the base together and let that set up for a few uh, a little bit until that glue is set and then once that glue is set I'm going to turn it on this side just going to balance it here with the uh, tall tower and add some glue on the inside there's no ledger strips here on the, this little notch but it's such a small area that I think you'll be able to work it in and keep it even. So the edges of piece one should line up with this notch because the outside of the notch is three-eighths of an inch and we cut this piece to nine-sixteenths. So I'm just going to put a little pressure on that. I'm actually going to just take a rubber band around that notch right there and that will hold that in place. And then we can flip around here and we'll do this notch on this side. And even though we don't have any glue on this side number seven, I'd go ahead and put it in place just to help kind of keep the notch sides in place there and give that a little bit of pressure. And then still holding that notch side, I'm going to flip this up and put glue along that side. And this side and then flip that down then I'll hold some pressure on that with my left hand and flip this side up go ahead and put glue there on the these ledger strips and fit that front piece in some pressure on that for a minute and 
and then finally flip it to this last side and open this up and then put this last side on and the ends of it should line up with the ends of the notch that you cut. And then hold that with some pressure. And then we'll just let that whole unit set up and cure for a few minutes. And then now that our glue is set up on the walls for our second level, we can add our round tower. Now it's going to fit right on the end here. The end of the top should be flush with the top of the box. And I'm going to turn it around this way. Now with the paper choice that I have here, I want to have just a little bit of a division there. So I've cut a piece of black cardstock that's a half an inch wide by an inch and a half tall. And I'm going to just attach it to the back of the tower so that a sixteenth of an inch shows. So I'm just going to remove some of this score tape backing that's on here. And I've prepped this piece of black with score tape uh, on the other side. And I'm just going to line this up so I have about a sixteenth of an inch reveal going up the edge there. And I think that will give a nice little division there between that. Obviously it's not necessary to do. You can skip that step. Or depending on what paper you're using, you may not um, need to have any kind of division there. Okay, so we're going to add this on uh, with wet glue on the inside here. And then of course uh, our score tape We'll remove the backing here and attach that uh, to the back side. So I'm just going to gently kind of, not, not crease that, but gently uh, pull that air tab out of the way so that once I remove the backing here and put it up there, it won't prematurely stick. And then I think you can see the glue that I've added here. A little bit more right there. And I'll just bring this in and fit it up tight. Make sure this top edge is flush. Don't put too much pressure on this side over here. There aren't any uh, supports in the middle here. It's just that lightweight chipboard. So I just kind of hold on to the whole thing. And then I'm just bringing my hand around to wrap that uh, piece of this piece on the back here. And then up here on the top for this little little tab that's going to bend to the inside, we have to cut a little diagonal and a notch in order to fit around that um, side of the board. So actually I just cut a little slit there and then I'm just going to wrap this down. It might require some some glue there to hold that but we'll see what happens. So we'll let this set up for a few minutes on the end. Before I cut it out, I backed it with some score tape. And I'm just going to set it. It should fit slightly inside of there, which is what you want. 
And before I remove that score tape backing, I'm just kind of uh, holding it in place and making some pressure. You can use your um, bone folder because we just want to find where that corner is um, and make a cut to it. So I'm just using my bone folder and you may not be able to see it but I can see where that cut that cut it that point is right there and then I'm just going to come in at kind of a 45 degree angle to that and try that out I want to have um, a piece like this that can come down and then a piece that will come down on the other side as well. So when you make this cut, allow a flap here to come down. And then we can just give that a little uh, preliminary scoring here. So that once we tape off, take off our, our score tape backing, it'll be easy to install. So I'll just go ahead and um, I did ink the edges there a little bit. It's not ne absolutely necessary. And uh, so I'll remove my score tape backing and go ahead and install this piece. And then finally to fill in over on this side, I've just cut a little piece of craft cardstock that is long enough to fit in between here. I cut it 7 eighths of an inch wide and then I scored it at 3 eighths and a half so that I would have a little 1 eighth inch channel in the middle and I can install that to just clean finish this last edge over here. And then I'm just going to take a little ink along any of these edges that don't already have it. This edge over here will be covered by the tall tower so you don't need to worry about that. And that's our interior completed. And finally, let's outline our rooftop base shape. And we'll do that by taking our piece of medium weight chipboard that we've cut for the rooftop base. It's slightly larger here than the top of our uh, structure. And we'll flip this over to make the outline, but what you want to make sure is that you get all of these corners aligned and the, the back part aligned and this corner over here aligned so that when you flip it over you can just trace the rest of it out. You won't be able to see that when I flip it over but that's what I'm going to do. So here's my rooftop base outlined and we can just set this aside until we're ready to work on the rooftop.